Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In today's video I will give you two big mistakes that I see people do over and over again when it comes to modularizing their architecture in Android apps. First of all, maybe for those who don't know what it means to modularize an Android app, here is a little sample project of mine. This is from my multi-module course, which is a premium course you can find on my website. Um, you can see there are more of such modules than this app module. So if you haven't worked with a multi-module architecture yet, you will only know this app module with this little green circle here. But we are actually able to create more of these modules, for example, Core, Core UI is one, we have onboarding tracker here, and that can come with a lot of advantages. On the one hand, a big advantage of a multi-module architecture is that you can have faster Gradle builds. We all know how slow Gradle can be and how endlessly it can build our projects. And the, the advantage if we use a multi-module architecture is that each module can be built independently using Gradle. So as I can see, we have a ton of Gradle files here that we can all configure for each specific module. And the advantage is that Gradle can, on the one hand, build each module in parallel if we have multiple ones, and it will only rebuild the modules that actually changed. And that will, of course, make the builds a little bit faster. Then another advantage would be a better work delegation in team. So imagine you would be working in a company. And then with multiple modules, it would be much easier to actually tell, okay, team A, you actually work on feature A, and team B, you actually work on feature B. And both these features would, would be um, a single module here, for example, onboarding and tracker. And these different modules won't be accessed by each other. So the onboarding module can't access the code in the tracker module and the other way around as well. So two teams can work on the same app, but without actually kind of changing some code of each other without wanting that. That of course comes with a third advantage that you just have a clearer separation of concerns. So as you can see, if we have a data domain and presentation, um, we can now decide that only data and presentation actually include this domain module and access the, uh, the code in it and not any other modules. So we really force our developers to only use the code they're supposed to use. And a fourth big advantage of a multi-module architecture is just the reusability of modules. So if we have our onboarding or tracker module here, that's for a calorie tracker app um, we made in this course together, then you can just take one of these modules and reuse it as it is in another project if that's done correctly. So all that sounds super cool, but let's actually get to two mistakes that I think cause more damage than they actually help you. And getting to mistake number one, now that is modularizing too early or too quickly. So I often see people actually modularize a project directly from the beginning on. So they create an empty Android Studio project. And the first thing they do is actually creating some modules to set up their multi-module structure. My clear recommendation here is to never start with a multi-module setup. Why? Because a multi-module setup actually involves quite a lot of time in the beginning to properly set up. So you just saw all the Gradle files. You will need to configure these. You will need to add dependencies to each Gradle file specifically. And that just costs a lot of time. And if you go with that multi-module setup is actually to, to save build time and you first of all invest like <laughs> five hours to set that up then you will actually need quite a lot of gradle builds to make up for that time you, you wasted for setting up that multi-module architecture and especially for small projects the uh, advantage when it comes to build time is just so insignificant that you will probably not even notice that so don't make the mistake and modularize directly from the beginning on in most in really most projects a multi-module setup isn't even necessary uh, usually you're totally fine with just using your app module and working with that and if you then realize at some point in your project, okay, now I actually would benefit from faster Gradle builds, if you then realize, okay, Gradle is actually now taking 10 minutes to build every time, then it makes uh, sense to think about introducing a multi-module architecture. Or only if you really realize, okay, now I need this better work delegation or this this better separation of concerns in my team, then I would start to migrate your existing single module architecture to a multi-module architecture. So to summarize, always start with a single module, treat your single packages in that single module as if they were real modules, and that will then essentially also make it easy for you to migrate to a multi-module setup at some point in your project 
if you realize you really need that. And before actually getting to the next mistake, a little shameless self promo till Sunday, which is September 4th, when this video comes out, there's actually still an ongoing sale for on the one hand, my multi module course, if you want to learn how to do this right in a practical setting here, as, it, as you just saw with this multi module calorie track wrap, if you want to learn how to build that, or if you're also interested in my new CICD Android course, then you can still get 25% off of all my courses till Sunday, and then the prices will rise again. If that's something for you, check the link down below. And now let's get to mistake number two. And that is layer based modularization. So what does that mean? So taking a look into the sample project again from my multi module course, what would layer based modularization be here? So in the end, it comes down to the modularization strategy. So how we arrange our modules to achieve our specific desired architecture and layer based modularization is one of these strategies that is a really bad one, which is why I listed it as a mistake here. But you can also apply this just as a mistake for normal package structures. So you, you should also not package by layers. So what does that mean? It would mean that you would have root modules or root packages, data domain and presentation here, and that would be a mistake. So I see a lot of people actually have such root modules or packages that are just called data domain presentation. In data, they put all of their data related code in domain, all of their business logic and use cases and stuff like that, and a presentation, all the UI code. So why is that a big mistake? So let's think about the advantages of a multi module architecture again, that I mentioned here at the beginning. First of all, faster Gradle builds. Why are the builds faster? Well, because Gradle only needs to rebuild the modules that actually changed. But what happens if you now have root modules, data, domain and presentation It's very likely that with every single Gradle build, some of these packages will have changed. So even if you just change um, one single thing in your data package, your whole data layer will rebuild. And that's of course not really what we want. Advantage number two was easier work delegation. And you don't really have easier work delegation if you modularize by layer or if you package by layer. Because in the end, if you say team A works on this module and team B works on this module and they shouldn't really affect each other, then with this approach, with a layer based modularization, they will still affect each other and kind of um, there would be the danger that they kind of break each other's code. Because if team A, for example, works on the domain module and team B works on the data module and the data module always needs access to the domain module, then they effectively work on two modules that know each other or where at least one module knows the other one. Let's take a look at advantage number three of a multi-module architecture and that is the reusability of modules. Do we really have a reusability of modules if we consider a layer-based modularization? No, not really. It's super unlikely that you will reuse your whole presentation layer of your project, which includes all your project's features, or at least the, the presentation layer of all your project's features, or the domain layer of your, of your project. That would be super unlikely and probably not going to happen. So you completely kill the reusability by modularizing by layer. And advantage number four is that we have a clearer separation of constants, and that is the only advantage that we actually have with a layer-based modularization, because we can define, okay, only data and presentation is allowed to access domain, but not the other way around. So that works with this approach, but all the three other advantages are pretty much killed and will completely backfire if you choose such a modularization strategy. So what would be a correct approach to modularize? As you can already see here in this project, this is not really a layer based modularization. Instead, we modularize by feature and each feature is modularized by layer. So we kind of choose a hybrid approach here. And why is that now better? Well, because on the one hand, if something changes in a module, then only that specific feature is actually changed and needs to be rebuilt. So we can only work on this onboarding module, for example, and the tracker feature for our calorie tracking doesn't need to be rebuilt if we actually change something in the onboarding feature. On the other side, it's of course also much easier to delegate work. So we can say, okay, team A now works on the onboarding feature, team B works on the tracker feature. So that also perfectly works. These two features don't need to affect each other. They don't need to access any of each other's code. So that works perfectly fine as well. And if we also take a look at the reusability, that is also given here. So we could simply take our onboarding feature here or our tracker feature, take it as it is and put it in another project and perfectly reuse it there. And taking a look at the last thing that is the reusability of modules, that's also given with this approach because we could simply take a whole feature here with the with its uh, sub module and reuse it as it is in another project without us needing to achieve 
just any code. So I hope that gave you some impression of how you should modularize and when you should modularize. Because again, I see people kind of see modularization as a general best practice. That's really not the case. You should only do this if you really feel like it's necessary. In my opinion, it's rather the best practice to not modularize because it just comes with a, with a lot of unnecessary extra complexity. However, if you are actually interested in learning how you can modularize and how you properly modularize big projects for which that's needed, then check the link down below for my multi-module course or for the new CICD course, again, for which you get 25% off with the discount code CICD. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy your day and see you back in the next video. Bye-bye.